Well, throw out the first period. And it wasn't a bad effort. It was a great effort in the third period, obviously. Um, we didn't use the word desperation, but we certainly played with, with you know, in a desperate manner. Um, and it's a shame at the end after taking that go-ahead goal with two minutes to go. That I can't pull the plug and just call that timeout. I wanted, I wanted to wait for the defensive zone face-off because that's what the book says you should do. <laughs> you know, you know, call it and set a rice. Um, anyways, maybe we'll get to do it again. Let's hope. Maybe I'll call the timeout. What was the emotion of the team in the, in the locker room? Yeah, after the game? Yeah. Oh, we treated it. I mean, for us, it was, I mean, we had to treat it like a win. Because it was, I mean, you had to do. We tonight's game was doing what was required to give us a chance to continue to play, and then you fall behind by three goals, and you battle hot enough to, you know, to actually take the lead and have a chance to win the game, and then battle hot enough to, to get the point that you desperately needed. I mean, that's a, you know, a lot of people played a role in that. We had great effort from Dayton for sure, so immense effort from Dayton in critical situations. I thought. You know, Maku and Cublin played against the Nyquist line all night long. And that was, I mean, other than that, you're going to put freshmen out against them. So I thought they did a very respectable job. I thought as the game went on, uh, we pressured the puck better. In the first period, we didn't do that at all. And, and that, that was our only chance, was to, you know, take time and space away from them. And, the, and a lot of the pressure was on the back pressure part of it, which is really essential. Coming back into the play when they were starting to generate offense and kind of shut it down. And then, um, and then guys getting you know getting a huge effort from Sean Saunders, yeah. who hasn't played in a long time, and uh, you know you know kind of felt like the uh, you know the odd man out, and now he um, you know he very much factored into tonight's game with a great effort. I think he really helped Grayson, and I he helped Power playing with two freshmen, gave them the confidence to have a good solid outing. Yeah. So I, I was pleased for the kids. The, and then know, Rocco Carzo chipping that puck, you know, getting into the offensive zone. Well, Rocco, I think, he, you know, he's done this, you know, for the last month or so. He's been a whole, he's been a much more mature player. I think he's got the idea that he's going to be a big point producer out of his mind and not worried about the points that will come as he plays. But the, he, he, what can he be? He be a real powerful addition to, you know, he's got a great explosion, he's great on the wall, he's physical, um, he has great acceleration, so I mean, he, he, those are the things he can bring, he can control those things, and you can see he brings it to a different level on that front. So I'm really pleased that he's starting to emerge as a player. Coach, were you aware of the um, score of the Providence Merrimack game going into the second intermission? Yeah, well, I, uh, going in, yes, we were, and we made a decision. Um, that we're going to go in and talk to the guys and let them know right up front what was going on. And, and it, we didn't use the word desperation, but you could tell that they played with a desperation in the third period. So I, 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 I'd like to think that maybe that worked, that worked as a positive. Um, and we weren't sure, because we didn't want to, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, and feel like, oh my God, but don't waste your time thinking about what might happen. Just go out, yeah. you know what you need to do. You need to find a couple of goals. Mm -hmm. So. Does it feel better that your team went and earned their way in as opposed to maybe just... Oh, no doubt. In. No doubt. Absolutely. I mean, that just yeah, gives us something to build off of. If we go up, if we let that three love score, you know, really fall into a 5-1 butt kicking or a 6-2 butt kicking never in the game, how do we leave this game? We leave this game somewhat very defeated, you know, emotionally. And I've got... It's a... Be careful using this word, but I mean it's a it's a fragile group only in the extent that the number the number of young kids that are there have never they, they can't believe how intense this is, given that we only play 34 or five games. They can't believe the intensity because some of them are coming from playing 70 games, and they thought, oh no way, how can a 35 game schedule weigh you down the way it does? And it's just because every every game is played like it's a playoff game, you know. What, what uh, was the strategy in the overtime? It must be so hard. Don't make any mistakes. Go after it. Go after it. Don't, don't right. stand around. Because pressure was, from our perspective, the, the, the most critical element of turning the game around was pressure in the puck, both, both in terms of getting after it, and then when they, when they had possession on it, rushes, 
not not just leaving it to our defense and not just leaving it to one back checker, but getting everybody back to shut down that offense that they so skillfully and ably get four people into every rush, you know, and use the, the one defenseman on every rush and sort of be able to shut that down. That was that was absolutely huge. So you had to stay after it. You couldn't sit there and say, well, let's sit back and only have one guy get up front and play off them a little bit because I think they, they'd pick you apart if you played off them. How fitting was it to see Dayton almost single-handedly save your season in the third and overtime periods? Yeah, he's the captain. and he's, I mean, he's, he really he is a special kid. And uh, I think everybody's starting to realize that. He's got, he's got a great future. I don't care what he does. He's just, he's, this college experience for him you know, he asked, coming from the car, leaving the airport, coming to the to uh, UMass his freshman year, he looked at Lenny Cannell and he said, you know, I've been out of school a couple of years. What's this college thing all about? And that was his question. We tease him about it all the time. We figured it out pretty good. You uh, waited on the ice for him after, his, after the game? After yeah, the it was interview. kind of an acknowledgement that, you know, you know, thank you and, and just, wanted to make sure that we, he knew how much we acknowledged his effort. And uh, they wanted to be, I didn't want to start anything in the locker room after the game unless he was there. So I was way for him to get him in there. Did you say anything in particular then after? The kids? To Dayton in particular, um, before you went into the locker room? So I stand up there? No, I mean, he just, no, he just, just congratulations, you played great ball. Thanks for keeping us in there. I'm sure you and your team are going to celebrate this, and how long will that celebration yeah, we'll have a hamburger and a ginger ale. Um, <laughs> if I hang with Mark, I might, I might have a beer. Um, how but long does that celebration last? No, I mean, well, well, I can at least, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go tomorrow to watch the New England prep school tournament with probably another coach in the East, and uh, at least I can go there and know there's more hockey. Well, there's no celebration. I mean, I think we, the kids should enjoy tonight. Not in a potty sense, but go have some fun and grab a bite to eat and get some rest and then it's back to business on Monday. We got our work out for us. Let us not forget that. The coach won't just one more? Yeah. Um, like are you surprised that this team is so young and they're constantly playing third periods as if, you know, they're the last periods of their career almost like it always seems to be the third period where they come out and play their best hockey. Am I surprised they come out in the third period and play their best hockey? Um, Given their, given their youth. I don't think I'm surprised, um, but you, know, you never can be sure. You know, we, all of us sit in there, you know, and, and, and after first period like we had tonight, and you start staring and wondering and you just try to, you, you need each other. We talk about foxholes all the time. The only way you stay sane in a foxhole in a, in a battle is to talk to the people in the foxhole. If you're in there and you isolate yourself, you're scared out of your wits. And you and you don't and you don't you know you don't you don't you you feel alone and you feel like overwhelmed. But if you keep talking to each other and you keep working together, you can survive the foxhole experience. And that's what the locker room is like. Cool. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Congrats. Picard though, and that'll be a couple on your right all day. Hey, Rocco, uh, this is arguably been your best game of the season so far. Yeah. How fitting is it that it came on tonight? Uh, well, you know, it's about time, you know, I've been struggling, but, I mean, I've been playing well in the other aspects of, of, uh, of the game, but, I mean, we as a, we as a team played solid tonight, so I think uh, it's going to carry over into next weekend. Can you, can you just talk about the celebration and how you guys are feeling right now? Uh, we're pretty happy. I mean, we were down 3-1, and, you know, we were kind of down because they told us that Providence was up 5-3. But, but, you know, uh, we came back hard as we always do in the third. And, you know, we're all happy about that, but uh, there's still a, a long way to go. Paul, well, can you talk about your emotions, you know, after the game once you clinched the playoff spot? Um, it was a pretty big sense of relief. Uh, you know, it was kind of an emo emotional roller coaster throughout the game. After the first period, uh, you know, everyone was kind of down, which was uh, – you know, I guess kind of expected after the effort we put forth, and then Mark and Cannon just had the uh, the speech of the year. Um, you know, he, he went off on us, and and uh, you know, I'm not gonna talk about what he said, but he uh, he really got us going, and uh, I think that was the moment where we just we pulled it all together. 
And then <clears throat> after the game, like I mentioned before, it was, just, it was a huge relief moment that we uh, clinched playoffs. Uh, you had some real spectacular saves tonight, like uh, Flynn and Nyquist, and, you know, and a, a, a love save to make to, to feel you were really on tonight. Um, yeah, I felt I was seeing the puck well tonight <coughs> after the uh, after the first period. Uh, you know, there's a couple goals that you'd want back, and uh, I, I know the guys were were looking to me to make the saves in there in the net, and I know I have to make some saves to. Uh, to keep the momentum going and you know credit to the defense let me see the puck and you know blocking shots and clearing away rebounds you know I, I can't me not mention them and, and any you know success that we have. Was it kind of fitting to have Concannon block that last shot? Oh uh, it was know, unbelievable. Uh -huh. Speech of the year and block of the year and he always jokes about after uh, <coughs> Like after the season over the past three years, he always goes in net, puts on my gear, and, and does that. So most most guys, when they're going down to block a shot, they go down on one knee. And if you look at Coco, he goes down in a butterfly like a goalie would. So it was uh, that was pretty big, especially after the shot that he blocked yesterday yeah. uh, on the penalty kill. And he was pretty banged up his knee. And for him to go down and do that again, you know, it's just a guy that's going to sacrifice his body for the for the team. Paul, the speech was after the second period for Cameron Gabe. Um, it was after. It was after the first. Yeah, the coach first came in after the, the second. The save he made on Flynn was a game saver. Uh, he was a little in deep, but uh, they had they had a quick transition three on two late in the game, and Flynn uh, was was right to your right, right to the door, doorstep. Mm -hmm. Were you able to what, sack the pads, or because he was right there? Um, yeah, you know they're a very good transition team, and you know we've been working, especially in the past couple of periods. You know, in the first period. You know, our fourth and fifth guy weren't coming back as hard as they need to, or one of the guys was changing, so we really focused on that. But uh, that's just one of those read and react plays, uh, you know, one of the last second desperation saves that, uh, you know, turned out in my favor. Was it bad? Yep. Hey, Dougie, uh, I guess you, uh, you and Michael Marku had the job of dealing with that, that easy line, you know, they're the first, yeah. you know, a line. Uh, can you talk about your feelings of coming out of this with the picking the playoffs? Uh, I mean, uh, like Paul said, it was an emotional roller coaster for us. Uh, before the game, coach took us aside and said uh, our job was the Nyquist line, and he said, uh, you know, we, he knew we were going to have our hands full, but he gave us the challenge, and I thought Mike and I did a pretty good job uh, keeping them in check. Um, you know, uh, that line consists of three of the best players in the country, as far as I'm concerned. The way they move together, they've been together for two years now. Um, so I know Nyquist had a couple points, um, but I feel it was a pretty uh, productive night just keeping him to those, you know, a couple points. He's pretty dangerous. But uh, all in all, uh, you know, uh, it was pretty fun. Doug, coming into this game, you guys could have clinched a spot if Providence had lost. But how does it feel um, having <clears throat> earned that point in the game? Um, uh, I can't tell you how happy. Uh, not only uh, myself, but all the seniors are to be able to keep playing. Um, you know, we've been uh, lucky to be able to put a UMass uniform on for the last four years, and to be able to continue the tradition for as long as we can keep going is uh, unbelievable. And how long, um, how long before you guys have to really start preparing again? You know, and put this game behind you. Uh, right now, uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, BC had a great weekend. They beat UNH twice. Uh, but we know we can play with BC, and uh, you know we'll uh, cherish this, and, and we'll be we're happy that we made the playoffs. But as far as we're concerned, we're we're uh, in the next weekend as of now. Rocco, did, when did you pick up Phillips coming back door? Um, I didn't actually pass that time. It was Hobbs. Hobbs made the pass. Yeah, I was the one who passed it. Passed, passed the Hobbs, the Hobbs and he made, made that great pass back door. Phillips. But what you did was chip it. There was a battle on the side boards that you won the, you was, won the uh, chip right there. The base off went back, and right. I went through the guy and chipped it, and then Hobbs came in and grabbed, right. grabbed the puck, and then passed across the ice to Phillips. That door. Rocco, can you talk about that individual effort goal? Just the one on one power? Uh, yeah, um, I was skating in the middle, and their guy flipped, flipped it up in the neutral zone. I caught it. And you know, I saw the ice, and I just skated. I just skated, and you know, I just, and then I just flipped it in. I mean, I don't know. It was a fast one. I really. Was that far start. side, short side? I couldn't, I couldn't tell. Far side, far side, side. Far side. Caught, yeah, caught yeah. him in transition. They flipped. Yeah, you know, out. I did that in practice a million, million times. I'm more to get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Polly too. You know, yeah. score, score, <laughs> Polly all the time on that. Yeah. So I mean, finally I get that monkey off. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.